Hey guys, my name is Minas and today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the liver. And as usual, we've broken it down to make it very simple and easy to understand. And we're going to begin at the beginning, at the blastula. The blastula is a ball of cells that's a result of fertilization. It travels down the uterine tube and it implants into the uterine wall. And a process of gastrulation will form the three germ layers. And this is a simplification for this, where we have the ectoderm, which will become your central nervous system and skin, the mesoderm, which has three parts, the paraxial mesoderm, somites, muscles, intermediate mesoderm, gonads, kidneys, and we have two lateral plates, a, a somatic lateral plate and a splanchnic lateral plate. The focus of today's video will mostly be on though endoderm, because the liver bud begins as an outgrowth from the endoderm but this is a flat pancake looking thing and eventually will become a tube and how it does that is that it, it folds on itself so if we have a few snapshots in time taken in the form of one two three it's at different times but it's a single snapshot we, it's a cross section of the fetus looking at it from up and we have here the ectoderm which actually pinches off and becomes a neural tube and you'll notice color-coded in blue the ectoderm surrounding that'll be the skin at the same time this is happening we also have the endoderm pinching off and becoming a yolk sac and the GIT the yolk sac is just early nutrition for the embryo it's a primitive structure that will eventually go away but let's focus now on the GIT so GIT if we cut it here, that's this pre uh, view on week four. If we look at it at day 25 though, from a longitudinal section, let's cut it this way, looking at it this way, where we have the GIT in green here, we'll see that the liver bud, it appears during week three as an outgrowth from endoderm of the distal end of the foregut. So this outgrowth, it grows into a section that I've color coded in purple as the septum transversum. And the septum transversum is quite simply just mesoderm. And this, so in red, in here, it's just mesoderm. So think about it as simply mesoderm. And it lies between the pericardial cavity above it and the connection of the yolk sac below it. So this purple bit is pretty much just tissue that the liver bud grows into. And if we look on day 32, as the liver bud grows into the septum transversum, the connection of the liver to the duodenum becomes narrow. And this is what will become the bile duct. And as the liver grows and the bile duct narrows, a ventral growth will appear on the bile duct which will eventually be the gallbladder and the cystic duct. So just as a quick summary, epithelial cells of the endoderm will pop the liver bud out. If you want to sound smart, the liver bud is also known as hepatic diverticulum. The liver grows into the septum transversum, which is mesoderm, it's just tissue. And the gallbladder and cystic duct are grown or develop from the bile duct. So, the septum transversum actually does contribute to liver development. The septum transversum actually forms the Kupfer cells, stroma or connective tissue, as well as the hematopoietic cells. Because initially, in utero life, one of the main functions of the liver is to make red blood cells, white blood cells, hematopoietic function. So, the liver cords, they actually intermingle with the umbilical vein, and these will form hepatic, the hepatic sinusoids, and then the liver cords themselves, they become the lining of the biliary ducts. Okay, so looking at this picture here, this is a day 36 cross-section of the embryo, looking at it this way. And in purple, we have the septum transversum. In orange is the liver that's growing and filling this uh, septum transversum. And above it is the pericardial cavity. In blue is the respiratory diverticulum, that where the, the lungs and the trachea are developed. 
and in orange, in green, we have the GIT and the biliary system. So just looking at this now, it's probably around day 40. I've drawn the diaphragm in blue to outline that the liver is just below it. And the liver is essentially completely covered in peritoneum in all areas except where it is in contact with the diaphragm. And this, is, this part of the diaphragm is called the bare area. B-A-R-E area, bare area. And I've drawn this one in particular to outline the connective tissue that is surrounding the liver. It's important to know the mesentery and what connects the liver to what in the abdomen. So I've drawn this one earlier. It was the cross section this way, looking at it up. And this one is a section this way, looking at it this way. In red here, we have these mesenteries that we were sp speaking about, the connective tissue. A very thorough explanation of how these mesenteries develop are in GIT1 video, the previous video. But I'm going to quickly explain it right now so that everyone can understand it without trying to go back there. So what happens is that there is connective tissue that connects the liver to the stomach, to the front wall, and then there is tissue that connects the stomach or the GIT to the back wall. So initially the liver is in the midline, but with stomach rotation, it moves to its position in the right side and it pulls the connective tissue with it to the right and the dorsal mesentery will be pulled to the left. So looking at it here, in red, connecting the stomach to the back wall, this is actually the dorsal mesogastrium or the dorsal mesentery here. Connecting the liver to the stomach and duodenum is the lesser omentum and connecting the liver to the ventral wall is the falciform ligament. The falciform ligament and lesser omentum are from ventral mesentery. So this right here is ventral mesentery where we have the falciform ligament here and the lesser omentum here, connecting the liver to the stomach. And so finally, let's talk about the function of the liver. Throughout uterine life, its main function is hematopoiesis. So that is, it's making blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells. The last two months of intrauterine life, this function gradually declines as other parts of the body take its function over, although it still does have some residual function in birth as hematopoietic center. Its other function is that by week 12, bile starts to be formed. And so this is the end of embryology of the liver. I recommend that you watch introduction or to embryology if you are completely new to embryology. And if you want to know exactly how the GIT rotates, and what happens to these mesentery, I recommend that you watch Embryology of the GIT. So you can contact me on Facebook if you have any questions or you can leave a comment in the box below. Thanks for watching.